The next thing we're going to do is exit out to the shell. And the shell is the area where you configure the machine that is the lightboard. Things like network settings, I.O., and the like. And don't forget that by exiting to the shell, you're going to stop outputting to your rig. So you should take some caution before you do this. So to get out there, I'm going to hit my displays button, which will drag focus to my browser. And I'm going to arrow down and hit exit. It'll ask me if I really want to quit, and I'll say OK. In real production conditions, I would make sure to save my show file first. When you get to the shell, you get six buttons. And the bottom right-hand one is shutdown. If we were to click that, that would shut down the console. We also have four different networking roles. Primary means that this will be the console that will output data to the lighting rig. I can bring a second device on as a backup. Other devices can come on as clients to the system. Or I can decide to work offline and not affect anyone else on the network. The final button is the Settings button, and I'm going to go ahead and click in there for today. When you get in the Settings area, you'll wind up in your General tab. And one of the things that's useful is to set your time in here so that your clock is right on your console. Another function in the General tab is your Monitor Arrangement area. And this allows you to pick the devices that are connected to your console, set resolutions, drag them around to make sure that your mouse goes in the right direction, and all of that. Below that is Software Update. ETC is always working on new and exciting software. And as we come out with new features for you, feel free to download them from our website as your production schedule allows, insert on a flash drive, and come here to update your console. Next, we're going to go into our Network tab. And this is where we can set up all of the network configuration for our console. In the upper box, this is where you would change things like the IP address of the physical ports on the console. Scrolling down, we have output protocols, which are the types of signals that go out to the lighting rig. Further down are interface protocols. One of the most common things is when you try and connect to the ARFR or the IRFR remote, if these boxes aren't checked for the network interface, those remotes will not connect. So be sure to come in here and check if you're troubleshooting. We also allow the console to host several services for the network, such as DHCP, time services, and TFTP update services. If you're unsure about what any of these functions do, be sure to read about them in the manual to make sure that your system continues to function. Next, we're going to go into the Maintenance tab. Some areas of interest here include the ability to do a deep clear. A deep clear is going to clear your persistent storage. This doesn't mean that the hard drive will be affected. This is just the memory that's on the console. Sometimes if things start to feel a little weird or sluggish, save your show file, come out to deep clear, and click yes. After that, you can go back into the console software, reload your show file, and see if it helps fix the issues. I'm going to hit no for today. If you do run into problems with bugs or any other issues, one of the first things we like to see are your log files. Your log files can be generated from the Save Logs button here in the shell or in the browser area of the console software under Export. I'm going to close out of here. Another thing you can do for annual maintenance on your console is come into your file manager. This will allow you to see all of the files that are on your hard drive and manage them in an efficient way. So maybe at the end of the season, you want to take all the files off and archive them on your computer system as opposed to leaving them on the desk. When you're done, you can hit Done to close the file manager. The next area of the shell is your buttons area. Many EOS family devices have customized button interfaces, including RPUs and RVIs. And this is where you come in to configure what those buttons do. And finally, the RFR tab, if you have an RFR connected via USB to a console device, this is where you can set the frequency channel and the network ID of that device. Don't forget to accept any changes you've made. And when you come back out to the shell, if you're ready to go back into the console, you'll want to go back in as a primary.